Hey guys, Luna and I are out for a, a wee stroll. We're about to cross underneath the, uh, the newly constructed Nipigon River Bridge, a bridge that divides Canada, basically. This is the only way to get from Eastern Canada to Western Canada. There's no way around. One rail track, one road. So you can imagine, hey, Luna, Luna, stay here. Hey, stay here. This is all new to her heights and stuff. We're up pretty high here. You see the construction of the old railway bridge. Luna, come, come, come here. Come here, stay out of there. So, let's take a walk. The bridge. There's no, <laughs> you know, all these sounds from the cars, eh, Luna? Freaks you. But there's no, uh, no cottagers under here, banner. <laughs> But look at all that lovely water in motion. Water in motion is the only time water will display convexity upon its surface reacting to what's beneath it and the motion itself. Otherwise, as you can see from the oncoming horizon, it's perfectly flat and level from any elevation. And that is not possible on a ball if you use Friggin' common sense. It's that simple. Elevate yourself off of, off of your imaginary ball in your imagination. And what should the horizon be doing? Not rising with you like on an infinite flat plane. Which is what we experience here, by the way. But curving away from you in every direction. It's that simple. Our reality destroys the globe. The shape of our reality, not just the water, the shape of the lands, mountains, everything, destroy that fantasy that we live on a ball. Prince of Wales on the Nipigon in 1919 may have been in a birch bark canoe that my family built here. So there's that. So we'll carry on with the walk, but I just wanted to have a little talk about reality and what we actually experience. And you can't deny that. You can't debate it. There's no debunking it. It is what it is. Hey, Mace. <laughs> anyway, I'll say hello to my amigo here and uh, carry on. He's not a cottager, better. Don't worry. <laughs> say hi to YouTube, man. <laughs> I filmed this for you earlier, but uh, I was interrupted by a young lad there um, passing by. But this is this is what they these engineers designed, I guess counterweights instead of like cabling you know from here to to create an equal op and an opposite pressure they've they put these massive weights to hopefully hold her down and it took a long time it split the country in half but what a massive undertaking i think 125 million dollars this ended up costing us massive, massive project, massive failure. Trudeau. <laughs> Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario. Massive waste of taxpayer money. We had a perfectly good bridge beside the old train tracks here. They just did. There's the old pier for it down there. And uh, instead of leaving up that old bridge for, you know, uh, access, emergency access, like when a bridge fails or, you know, God forbid, uh, alien invasion or terrorism attack, you know, what are they? Here's your prime two targets to disable Canada. Those columns there and those columns there. One, one bomb and that's it for Canada. No access across our country. 
Is that by design? Or is that stupidity? You tell me, guys. With these counterweights, uh, wow, massive. I wonder how far down in the ground they go. Probably a long way, as long as those, I would imagine. But uh, Mother Nature will always win. And putting a steel bridge, I mean, they could have put an overpass here, a highway overpass, beautiful with roundabouts to our town. For the And half the time it took to build this fucking ridiculous abortion of a bridge. Failed design, meant for a tropical climate where the temperatures are constant. Not constantly changing from minus 40 Celsius to plus 40 Celsius. Steel expands and contracts. Common fucking sense. Just like the horizon is always fucking level. And it's not possible on a fucking ball. That is common fucking sense. So yeah, I'm at the top of the river here. Uh, top of the bridge as the, as the river passes under us here shortly, but this is uh, the info. If you want to read this, screenshot it, pause it, I hope, you, I hope it's clear. It's quite interesting, but uh, this bridge failed. This is steel cables and they didn't account for minus 40 temperatures to plus 40, so both ends of this bridge lifted. I just came across, I felt the bump. I just made it past and this whole end lifted up like three or four feet over here separated they didn't these engineers didn't tie down they have to tie down this way you see right and steel expands and contracts they must know this but they took down a perfectly good bridge that ran this one beside here uh, and they split the country in half for almost a month it was uh, quite a traumatic event for our country these engineers right that tell you you live see that curve that's the only time you see a curve on earth that's that's a gopro lens you see globlings you can see the curve there right but you can't see it in reality you see do you see the difference the curve no curve perfectly flat and level horizon. That includes land, masses, valleys, rivers, lakes. They all should be curving away from you like on the magical fairy tale ball. The horizon should always dip away in any direction, right? See what I'm saying? Beautiful up here. Okay, Luna's impatient. She's good, so good. Just trying to like get her comfortable with the traffic, you know. It's all new to her. She's doing really good. She's coming out of her heat. But she's turning into quite the little guard dog, I'll tell you. See? She's barking at the <laughs> see? Oh yeah. I spoke too soon. Hey, hey, it's okay. You can't cry. You don't own the bridge, Luna. You don't own the bridge. <laughs> so, the guy's working on the bridge. She's got her hackles up. She always interrupts my videos. This is a magnificent river, guys. This is some of the best fishing in the world in this river right here. A uh, world record uh, brown trout. I think it's uh, from this river, pretty sure. Just saying. Okay, we're off to the reservation, you and I. And remember, reality kills the globe. Hey, Luna. Hey, Luna. Where's it? Hey. So, guys, so I'm on the bridge again here. Provincial, Ontario Provincial Bridge Inspector, I believe. Get a little of this. Oh, they're inspecting. What a view. What a view today. 
Well, there's your bridge inspector. About a 20 year old girl. I don't know what she's inspecting. I shouldn't assume. But I can ask her. Uh, she's inspecting everything. She must have the keen eye. Checking bolts by hand. Uh, yeah, you see that? Did you guys see that? So she's she's checking bolts by hand. Can you imagine the, the torque on those bolts? Do you think her checking it with her hand will make any difference, glow blinks? See, I equate this to globe charge stability. Excuse me. Hello. Oh, I don't want to. Hi. Are you a bridge inspector? Yeah. yeah? Right on. There you go. Right from the horse's mouth. She's a bridge inspector. And she's tacking bolts with her hands. She must have a powerful grip. I know, she's just checking for loose, anything loose. So they, they got a bunch of students out here inspecting the, oh, this guy's knocking on, this guy's knocking on the steel. This guy's knocking on the steel, this young lad. Oh, I hope I got that. We're gonna ask him how she sounds. How's she sound? <laughs> she sound all right. There's your uh, bridge inspectors. Inspecting a bridge that the initial design was a fantasy thinking that steel cabling would be the best building material in an environment that goes from minus 40 to plus 40. And they had a perfectly good bridge across here they took down and disabled the country because of their faulty designs on this one. And now they've got people out here knocking on columns to check uh, <laughs> the integrity and checking fasteners with their hands. Brilliant. Brilliant. That same logic applies if you think you live on a ball and a constantly rising horizon with your elevation is even possible on that fantasy ball. So we're going to go up to the lookout tower there, guys, and have a look around, shall we? <laughs> uh, that was great. That was doing good. We're almost back across the river. You see globlings? Even with like mountain ranges, ups, higher and lower elevations, the further you get away, more flat it becomes. Common sense. Reality destroys the gold fantasy. Well, there's a good view of the bridge, guys. And those blue lights, by the way, those, those fucking lights on that bridge, they, they change our whole night sky. We have a blue hue through our sky now. And it's not natural light. LED light is probably worse than fluorescent light for the human condition. I'm just, just saying. So here's the, the new lookout tower. We can clearly see, start to see the properties the natural properties of water, and that water is in motion. 
and the majority, the bulk of the volume, except near the shoreline, where there's like a meniscus effect, like a bubble globulins pressure, and and the current at the surface. That's the only time you'll see your imaginary curve. There's water in motion. When it's perfectly still, flat, and level, you don't see any curve anywhere at any distance, unless you're using a GoPro lens, like I showed you in the photographs. So this is the Nipigon River Basin area. Uh, it's, it's beautiful here. I got above the glass. I just need all this new glass here. It's wonderful. So very safe for the kids. They're so quite high up here. There's my village. And my ancestors laid a rest right in this area here. My grandfather and two aunts. Rest in peace. I don't visit them often as I should, as often as I should. It's Lake Superior. And the other way up the Nipigon River takes you to a massive, another massive freshwater lake, Lake Nipigon. But uh, I just thought I'd share this view with you guys and point of view. It's mine, take it for what it's worth. Nothing to some of you, something to some. But if you accept the natural first principles of this reality, globe debunked. It's game over, probably. So they're gonna start what? Start a world war? To distract us? Cause more confusion, right? And Canada's fucked if that happens because we only have one access to our, through our country, right there. Easy target for glo globaling fantasy war machines, fantasy war machines. Same thing, right? It's a false dichotomy. The real war is us against them, guys. You know, the people don't want war in any country. This is what I do because I converse with people from all over the world on a daily basis. A daily basis. And nobody wants war from dozens of people, countries, war, war, torn countries like Ukraine. Right now, I have friends in Ukraine. I have friends in Russia. that It's a lovely path right here, guys, with the view of the river. So this is where chaga forms, guys, on yellow birch. A fungus we use for medicine. Many medicines. But you'll find it on yellow birch trees only. And there are plenty of them here. carry on with our walk. Luna's ahead of me there. So, choose your path wisely. Which path of reality you follow. Have a great day. Right on. Peace.